Hello my soccer universe. Well, Portugal would have been the proper choice for the jersey today, but hey, Liechtenstein won. I have a Liechtenstein jersey now. I'm gonna show off my Liechtenstein jersey. How often can you wear it? That's the beauty of the Nations League, is that you actually can wear the jerseys of smaller nations uh, because they are sometimes winning, they're playing each other. It was not the uh, previous of wins. And maybe let's start this video in Liechtenstein, which is the, all the way down a little bit. But, but you know, since I have already Liechtenstein there, and this was clearly the biggest clash of the evening. Uh, let's talk about it. Uh, it had to be actually changed from San Marino to Rimini, which I thought was interesting. I think it was due to, uh, again, Corona and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the game, it was very quickly decided. Uh, Hasla gets an early penalty in the third and then Frick in the 14th makes it 2-0. Uh, and that was the game. San Marino had the occasional chances here or there, but you know... <sighs> You need more games and it would have been better for San Marino to be in the group of four in League D, not in the group of three. Um, I also was wondering, Liechtenstein, as I said, pl uh, played in not in the uh, blue, but in the red jerseys uh, against San Marino, which made sense. But when the game goes to Liechtenstein, San Marino's black jerseys, I don't think black against this will work well. But hey, who knows? And Macron hasn't issued a new Liechtenstein jersey. That was also interesting. Let's go to League A. Uh, I actually watched only two games from uh, League A and saw highlights from the others, but let's start with the ones that I didn't watch. Belgium against Iceland. Uh, honestly, Iceland started better there. Took even the lead, could have had two within the first 10 minutes. Fried Johnson was, took a very nice uh, deflection by Denayer. But then Belgium decided, okay, we cannot lose to Iceland here. And just a few minutes later, Axel Witzel uh, makes it 1-1, but try in the 17th, 2-1, uh, and then in the second half, uh, maybe my favorite goal, the Bruyne assist on Mertens, who just uh, slams it kind of in. 3-1 uh, in the 50th, and then two more, but try gets a brace, and Doku, another the, the Bruyne assist in the 79th, and it is a 5-1 destruction of Iceland by Belgium. Belgium underlining that they might be the most talented team in Europe at the moment. However, I think there's another team that will talk about it in a second. Uh, it's definitely not England where, you know, with all the um, uh, lady visitors in uh, Iceland. That's a story that I, I thought this is long gone. <laughs> uh, and, 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 anyway, it was kind of that, you know, uh, it was not a good game at all, and Southgate uh, probably tried a few things which didn't work. They could have won it very, very late when Harry Kane uh, rounded Schmeichel, but it was clear off the line Schmeichel should never gone out. But I think that Denmark had the better chances, Denmark probably should have won that one. Jack Grealish got his debut finally, since he was so upset to not feature. But what I watched mainly was the replay of the uh, World Cup final between France and Croatia uh, and off the bat I have to say this is one of the most beautiful jerseys that has been issued now uh, against one of the absolute worst and I don't know Croatia had such a wonderful jersey four year, years years ago I don't even mind the big checkerboard pattern but what they do with the color you know it's kind of uh, boxed off goes against and around it the sleeves don't fit and then a white back it just there is nothing that looks all right with this jersey there is nothing the france jersey though clearly takes its cues from the famous 1984 jersey not the one that i have back back here because 1984 the red bar really went across and then you know with with the lines it kind of mixes uh, the 2012 style, which I didn't like that much with the 1984 style. It's a wonderful looking jersey. It's uh, original, it's French, uh, it has class. I totally love that one. I would love to add this to my collection. Although there's one jersey uh, from Nike uh, for national teams that I like even more, and that is, of course, the Finland jersey. That I think is even uh, bolder in a way. Despite the horrible choice, Croatia actually played really well in the first half and took a fully deserved lead through Lovren, uh, who you know got on the rebound uh, for after Conquer and Conquer the ball. Uh, does not hit it, takes it around and then shoots it in the net. I think there were chances for Croatia. Uh, they would have definitely deserved to go with the lead in, into the half. They were the better team. France looked sluggish. France looked slow. 
and not cohesive at all. Except when they turned it on the 43rd or minute with a wonderful uh, move, I think originally over Mondi. Uh, I think Benyeda was in there, Martial then plays it out uh, into Griezmann, who uh, puts in the net. A wonderfully played goal. This is what France can do for you. And this was just an, uh, an instant where I think the commentator even said uh, after the goal score, yeah, you just have to complain more and more and more and then they deliver. It was a wonderfully played goal, probably the goal of the evening, I have to say, although we have a contender in another game as well. And then to <laughs> pound on Croatia, uh, Benjeda with another cross finds Martial, uh, who hits the post, post, head of the back, uh, back of the head, head of the back of Livakovic, and it's 2-1. Uh, for France ahead of the half, absolutely undeserved. Right after the half, Croatia made big claims for a penalty, and this uh, is crucial for a little bit later, where I have to say, um, yeah, the ball hits the defender uh, on the hand, but mm, no. Yes, if VAR was there, probably would, would, would have been given, but uh, I was okay that this was not given. They get the equaler, though, uh, when Kovacic plays a nice through ball to Brekalo, who uh, goes against four very passive French defenders. I mean, uh, it was not stumbling through because he really uh, weaved and so gets a nice uh, equalizer. 2-2, two -two, game on. The problem is that just 10 minutes later, equally easily from a corner from Griezmann, Upamecano is the only one who is jumping high and can put it in the internet. Upamecano having though a rather weird game uh, I have to, have to say it was not his uh, best game that I've ever seen but he gets his goal meanwhile also Kamavinga came on and clearly showed that he is one of the brightest stars coming up uh, he will be one to watch for sure um, and then France get a, a penalty when um, the ball from across hits the thigh of Brozovic and goes on his hand the referee points to it and immediately they unlover it, and I totally understand it. Gets very upset with the uh, uh, re reference. You didn't give it over there, but you're giving it here. This is, in the, the, I totally understand it, because this to me was also a uh, penalty. Uh, I don't understand the rules any anymore. I think it would have probably given uh, in VAR circumstances, but if the ball bounces off your body onto your hand, I'm sorry. The, no, absolutely not. Shiru makes it 4-2. And the result was too high because Croatia actually played much, much, much better than uh, against Portugal and France for the first 40 minutes or so was basically not on the field. So rather lucky victory, but hey, it goes. Uh, for Portugal, the, Ronaldo was back in the lineup in search of his 100th goal. And I have to say... Um, not only was Ronaldo back in the lineup, but Sweden was also more or, or organized team. Portugal did not look as fluid as they looked against Croatia. Um, I think the fact that there are two factors. It's the more organized Swedes, but also that Ronaldo, uh, as great as a goal scorer it is, and I will praise him in a sec all over the place. As great as a goal goal scorer, I don't think that Portugal will look as good with him as they did um, against Croatia when he was not in the lineup, where um, the front four it was just wonderful to watch. However, having said that, uh, it took a while for um, Portugal to get going, Ronaldo having a few chances, of course, because now everything is geared toward, 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 towards him. And when Svensson gets his second yellow, the second yellow of the game, and he's already said, set off, but it was a stupid challenge, I have, have to say. Free kick for Ronaldo, for Portugal, <laughs> that Ronaldo takes. And I know his free kick record is not uh, great as of late, but he puts it into the net, his 100th goal. There's only one, I think Ali Dei was has 108. He's only the second ever player to reach 100, but uh, reaching this in Europe, I think, is a much bigger achievement than Ali Dei's. Not discounting him, but I have to say the opposition that Iran has to play, the opposition that uh, Portugal have to play, is that's a different story. Uh, of course, that Ronaldo has now over 160 caps helps him in reaching that. Uh, it also has, has, has been said. But yeah, he, a few years ago, totally reinvented himself. He's now a gold poacher and he is going for that record. I would not be surprised that if he has reached a record that after the Euros, he calls it quits. 
um, I think this will be a last run. I also have to say that with everything that the Portuguese have there up front and you know, they will find defensive solidity. I trust their coach. As much as everyone's talking about Frost, Belgium, the young England squad, the Netherlands and so on, no one's talking about Portugal. Portugal has won the last Euro, has won the Nations League. Um, I would not be surprised if Portugal wins the Euros again. They have a tough group, but Portugal, this will be a tough out for any opponent, especially with this, uh, the players that they have on the front and the defensive solidity that um, the coach gives them. Uh, Joao Felix then assists Ronaldo for his second goal, also very well taken, he's now 101, only seven goals. I actually think there's a good chance that he can reach that one. Probably, probably even uh, this year. But you know, the latest when World Cup qualifiers get started. So I think this is now time that we look a little bit at the standings here uh, in League A. Um, in the Group A2, Belgium now, the two that of uh, England is ahead, is clearly favored to move on. And in A3, Portugal and France, Portugal, thanks to goal difference, still still ahead. But those two are now six points ahead of Sweden and Croatia, which was kind of to be expected. Okay, uh, we didn't have any League B, League C. I honestly, I saw the occasional highlight, but I didn't really see all that much. Um, Armenia got a really well-deserved win over Estonia, uh, scoring actually a couple nice goals uh, on the way as well. Um, uh, Angulo with a uh, long shot and Carpetian, I think also with some skill, um, was well, as I said, well deserved. I couldn't see anything of Georgia North Macedonia, uh, which ended 1 1. Uh, Georgia taking the lead. This is an interesting game because we might see this in the, na in the Nations League playoffs for the Euros. Uh, also, uh, those are two potential uh, Euro participants. So, uh, in that sense, I wish I would have seen highlights. I haven't. Um, Cyprus completely outclassed by Azerbaijan, who only got a goal through Medvedev, probably should have taken more. And uh, the last game was between Luxembourg and Montenegro, where I think Luxembourg more or less was the better team, but they gave away a late penalty, which is uh, converted by Bekira in stoppage time to give them a 1 0 lead. So, uh, with that, let's look at the standings in League C. Uh, in the group, Montenegro with that win is now ahead of Luxembourg, who is ahead of Azerbaijan. Uh, yeah, level, more or less level on points with Azerbaijan. But I think they won against Azerbaijan, so that's why they are ahead. Think or wrong, think. Uh, in that group, it's uh, Georgia, North Macedonia are head to head. Anyway, I also uh, owe you for League C, where Liechtenstein, uh, the, where Liechtenstein takes now the lead and is first in first place. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you watched, what you thought about all the games played in the Nations League. Um, it was a welcome break. I have to say it was not all that exciting soccer to watch, but there were a few inter interesting games. I take away that Portugal is a top, 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 top team in Europe. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye!